against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under foot, because he hath set, set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because I know his name. Hallelujah. <laughs> he shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You ought to be shouting here. How can you stand it? How can you stand it to know that God has written your epitaph? Put it in the Bible that you can read. He said, no weapon formed. Put them hands together, saints. There's a storm out on like ocean.
Give him the praise that he deserves. Does he deserve your worship? Does he deserve your worship? Come on, raise your hands in the sanctuary. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve the air that I breathe. You deserve the lifting of my hands. You deserve the lifting of my heart. You deserve Help me say, you deserve it. Everybody say, you deserve it. We offer praise. You deserve it. Come on, worship him. Help me say, you deserve it. All the glory. You deserve it. You deserve it.
just open up your mouth and just bless him in the house. Come on, open up your mouth and just bless him in the house. With everything going on, you open your mouth and you thank him. Come on, with the breath that you have, you thank him. You gave me this breath and I'm going to give it back to you with a thank you. You gave me my life, health, and strength and I'm going to lift my hands and give the worship back to you. Come on, God is calling for worship. Ah, when the world is going crazy, you have your mind and you have your worship. Hallelujah, yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. Hallelujah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. You're awesome, you're faithful, you're wonderful, you're lovely. And we praise your wonderful name. For you deserve it, you deserve it. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it. One last time, you deserve it. Everybody say, you deserve it. 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 Come on, clap your hands and give God. Everybody that has two plans, can you clap your hands and give God praise? Hallelujah. 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 If he didn't deserve it, if he didn't deserve it, then it would be appropriate not to clap our hands. If he didn't deserve it, there would be a reason for you to sit there and be quiet. But if you know that he deserves it, help me give God a loud praise right now. Come on, Matthias, help me give God a loud praise right now. Come on, come on, come on, those you too busy. Some of you so tuned for school. Come on, help me, help me, help me give God a loud praise. Hallelujah. 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 Everyone standing in the house as we declare our responsive reading this morning. of his pastors, enter to his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and give God a praise in this house. Hallelujah. mighty God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. The angels bow before him and heaven and earth adore him. Somebody say he's a mighty God. Somebody say he's a mighty God. I think it praise God because it's in moments like these where the might of God, the glory of God gets put on full display for the whole world to see. <laughs> ah, maybe we're not serving the same God today because I just thought that we would just be a little bit more amen excited about God getting ready to flex <laughs> ah, God's getting ready to show you what kind of healer he is God's getting ready to show you what kind of protector he is. I thought I had somebody in here that already knew it. But just in case you didn't know, look at somebody and tell them he's a mighty God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I thought I had a few people that would agree with me this morning. Can you help me praise God for what you already know about him? He's a protector. Let me help up here. Ah. 
keeper. He's a sustainer. He's a protector. He's a healer. He'll make you whole. Now, somebody help me praise God for what you already know about him. Revelation of what you already know. Uh, did you hear what I said? The world is getting ready to get a lesson on what you already know. You got history with God. You got a track record with God. You got a tab with God. All the ways He's already made. say neighbor I've been sick before and he made a way then and tell him I believe he's gonna do it again look at somebody else and say neighbor I've got a testimony I've been at the door the depth of at, at the doorstep of death but look at your neighbor and say neighbor he brought me out of that and he'll bring me through this and I'm not waiting till it's over I'm not waiting till they find a cure. I just know based on his track record that he's able to keep me from falling. That he's able to... <laughs> Look your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor, the world is looking for an answer. But tell him I already have the answer. Tell him I know Jesus for myself. That's why I'm jumping. That's why I'm running. That's why I'm clapping my hands. I got the answer. And his name is above every name. And his name is Jesus. Jesus, I got some Jesus. 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 I got some Jesus
got some Jesus. Hey.
praise him. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to praise him. running around like they don't know what to do but we the believers know what to do we know how to worship and praise our God we know how to pray and consecrate ourselves unto God because in Christ Jesus we have stability in Christ Jesus we have an anchor Help me say it, old school church. That rock is Jesus. He's the only one. Lift your hands like you have confidence. Be very sure. My grandmother used to sing that. <laughs> your hands and give God praise. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. I want to apologize online. I know I sound a hot mess. Amen. That song is even old school for me. <laughs> Amen. But that rock is Jesus. Anybody anchored? I feel you. I feel the beacon window. Anybody? Uh, I thank God even if I don't know all the words, he's still got the melody in my heart. Lift your head and say, that rock is Jesus. <laughs> He's the only one. That rock is Jesus. He's the only one. Be there, Every show, your anchor, 
Clap your hands and give God praise in the house. I said, clap your hands and give God praise in the house. Amen, amen. We want to thank and praise God for you all being with us today. Amen and amen. We had some decisions to make. Should we go forth? Should we not go forth? I don't know about you. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. <laughs> We've been in church all weekend. Amen. And this whole weekend, it felt like every time I came in the house of God, I was free of all distraction, all worry. Wasn't worried about what was going on on the outside. I don't know about you, but the safest place in the whole wide world is still in the will of God and in his church. And I just refuse to allow the world to tell us that we can't find refuge in the house of God. If I die, let me die <laughs> in the army of the Lord. I'm not saying we throw, amen, wisdom out the window. I'm not saying that we don't take admonishment to what the CDC tells us, the, you know, the, 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 the bees, the bees uh, central controls, whatever, the, you know, um, what they're admonishing us to do. And I said, hey, you know what? I think and praise God that we're growing, but we ain't grown quite there yet. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But I just thank and praise God to be in the house with other believers saying that, you know, what? we just choose to trust God. Amen. I got some hand sanitizer and I got to worship. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to wash for 20 seconds and I'm going to worship for 20 minutes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're not throwing caution out the window. We're not being irresponsible. We just chose, amen, to have church. Amen. And if it would have just been four of us in there worshiping, we would have been in there worshiping, jumping and running around. <laughs> amen. And I think and praise God for his keeping power. Amen. And that in the midst of all that's going on, he preserves his people. Amen. Amen. If I don't preach today, you should have got it earlier. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. We do want to welcome those of us, those that are joining us a via social media today. Amen. For those that didn't feel well, were at risk, or just felt like, you know, it's best for me to be home. Amen. Whatever your prerogative is. Amen. There is no condemnation on this front. Amen. Amen. Go where you need to be. Amen. Follow your, amen, healthcare professionals admonishments. Amen. And so we do want to welcome those who are joining us today via live stream. Amen. My wife for something with the kids that say, you know what, stay home. Amen. amen. Stay home. Amen. <laughs> we have, we got a baby, you know, we got things to think about, you know, amen. amen. And where we are, it's, it's hitting a little bit different where we are than out here. Amen. So, amen. Let's just use precaution. Amen. So with all things, you want to use wisdom, you want to use, amen, precaution and have faith. And so I thank and praise God for those who are joining us, amen, via, amen, social media. We thank you for being with us, amen, in worship, amen. You're always welcome to join us, 4909 Crenshaw Boulevard, for the Lord is doing something awesome even right now, amen. Everybody grab a gift, amen, grab a gift, amen. In this season, amen, where it seems like resources are scarce, amen, let's always have something carved out for God, amen. Amen. We still have an obligation, amen, to stay under divine protection by being obedient in our worship unto God. Amen. And in this season, I just refuse to go buy, amen, groceries and, amen, wrestle with people over, you know, the essentials, amen, and, and, and not give God his part. Amen. There's some people who are taking, amen, this time to, amen, gouge. Amen. I've never seen things be more. I think you pay more attention to things when you're in the panic mode. Amen. And I was in the store this morning. I think I stood in that line an hour and a half, amen, to get, amen, just that rouse. Because it seemed like everybody was just going crazy, <laughs> amen. And I think, thank and praise God, amen, that he had let me get what <laughs> I needed to get. Amen, we're trying to find some things to make sure we have things here at the church, amen, to make sure we have the necessities and things of that nature. But, amen, there are people who literally are going left, Amen. Literally going crazy. Amen. About the unknown. But thanks be unto God that we have an assurance in him. Amen. Amen. I thought I would have had a few more hand claps than that. Amen. If you know Jesus, you should be praising him. Amen. Amen. God will always take care of the needs of his people. I got too many witnesses for it to be that quiet up in here. He will always take care of his people.
and you lift your head like you just know it, he will always take care of his people. Hey, somebody give him a holler in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will always take care of his people. Been walking with him too long. He will always take care of his people. <laughs> Just look down your own, tell him he will always take care of his people. He will always take care of his children. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. So we're giving today because we just take God at his word. We just believe, amen, that he will always take care of his people. Amen. Amen. For those that are uh, streaming with us that want to give, amen, you can worship with us electronically by a cash app. That's dollar sign Bethesda Temple L.A. Amen. Bethesda Temple L.A. Amen. We want to make sure that everybody has a chance to give. Amen. We you know take card here and check and cash and all that kind of stuff. But there's some people who always get plagued with, I didn't bring no money. So we got cash app. Amen. <laughs> we moved it to the 21st century. Amen.
We're so glad to be in the house of God this morning. And we're excited to introduce to you our guest for today. When I uh, call your name, will you please stand and remain standing until the end of the uh, greeting? Um, Maya, Maya Weaver Lowe. Maya Weaver Lowe. Did she step out <laughs> there? is Maya. Praise the Lord, Maya. She's a guest of Lois and Martin Johnson. Johnsons have been busy, haven't they? <laughs> Praise God. All right, Johnsons. Timon Rogers. There he is. Amen. Timon is a guest of Sister Mariah. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Timon. Tavia, the Tavia Solomon. Where y'all at? Oh, there they are. <laughs> Tavia, Micah, Alvin, <laughs> Angelica, and Remy. Solomon, the whole Solomon family. There y'all are. Praise the Lord for you all. And they are self invited. <laughs> They just came on. Praise God for you. Yes, welcome, indeed. And lastly, Cassandra Smith. Cassandra, praise the Lord, there's Cassandra over there. She's a guest of Sister Oni Aduni. <laughs> Amen. Sandra, she was in a hurry getting here. She said, I, I came running when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I saw her afar off, and that sister was in a hurry. We praise God for all of you that you chose to come visit with us today. We hope that you enjoy the remainder of the services. Praise God for you, and you may be seated. In Jesus' name. <laughs> mm. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, no matter what's going on outside. Amen? We're going to continue to rejoice in the Lord. Um, this evening at 6, we will not have our evening service. No evening service tonight. Our Bible study, um, Pastor will be doing Bible study online. We will not assemble to have our Bible study on Wednesday. Um, it will be Facebook Live. Um, at the end of service, by the end of service, Elder Boyd will probably have some information for us. If you just have internet, how you still can um, sign in to um, uh, see the Bible study. Um, the seniors are seasoned saints. We had planned um, to have a phone training session on next Sunday. Um, we're, we're not going to forget about it. We're going to postpone it. But there are some surveys out in the lobby, and they asked you some questions about what you want to do with your phone. Do you know how to turn it on, turn it off? Do you know how to do your text messages, you know, your storage, everything? And all those things will be addressed at this training session. But we will let you know when the date is going to be and lastly, we need volunteers to assist us in doing a little extra cleaning and sanitizing of the church. We're going to meet after church, and, um, you know, we're going to, you know, spray down some things, wipe up some things, so the church will continue to be sanitized. And on Wednesday um, at 11 o'clock, those who can volunteer to come down for a little while, we're going to do it again. And on Friday at 11, if you can come back again, we want to make sure that we have a safe environment here in Bethesda. Not that we're afraid of anything. We know that God has us covered. But somebody might come in here that's not covered. So we want to make sure, we want to make sure that this place is ready when we come in we feel comfortable and we can praise god amen praise 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. You know, I was thinking about just everything that's going on in the world. And, you know, the devil is a liar. You know, when I go in my workplace, people are just, just going crazy and they're so afraid. But how many know that we're not a slave to fear, but we're children of God and we have to remember that. Turn to your neighbor, says, and tell them, I'm no longer, come on, tell them, I'm no longer a slave to fear, but I'm a child of God. The Bible says in Psalms 118 and 17, it says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. How many believe that today? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but when I think about his word, you have to be grounded and rooted in his word. The Bible says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 on thy right hand, but it shall not come to thee. Hallelujah. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. I mean, how many know if you believe that? Come on and clap your hands. Hallelujah. Unravel me with a melody, and you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm going to sing that again. You unravel me with a melody and you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone and I'm no longer a slave to fear listen for I am a child of God. How many believe that today? I'm no longer a slave to fear. For I am a child of God. Come on, sing with me, Gloria. From my mother's womb, you have chosen. I'm not 
you have chosen me oh your love has called he's called my name and i've been born again into the family
I am a child of God. Come on, lift your hand and say, I am a child of God. Lift your hand and say, I am a child of God. Like he's got it all in his hand. 
I wish you would let go of it because he's got it. Hallelujah. I wish you let go of it and lift your hand like you know he's got it. I wish I had some help in here. Stretch your hand and let go of it and release the worship because he's got it all under control. I have no reason to fear. I have no reason to fear. No reason, no worry, no, 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 I am a child of God. Say it to yourself, say it. I am a child of God. What are you worried about? You can say, I am a child of God. I'm going to walk right through it. I'm going to stand on this ground. I am. A child of God. And though he slay me, I will trust him. I am a child of God. In the storms of life, I am. I am a child of God. Clap your hands and give him praise. Come on, come on, don't let me down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am a child of God. <laughs> I am a child of God. Maybe he has us here today to remind us that we are his children. <laughs> and he's not a deadbeat dad. No, he's not. A child of God. You wave your hand like you know he's a good father. You're a good, good father. And I'm loved by you, yeah, yeah. You're a real good father, yeah. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am, yeah. yeah. Ah, somebody shout, he's a good father. Somebody shout, he's a good father. He's a good father. Oh, I need you to shout like, you know, like somebody owe you $25 and they, he's you a know, good father. they order in KFC. Come on, lift he's your voice and say, father. he's a good father. He's, he's a, a good father. father. He's a good father. He's a good father. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. Come here, sister Gwen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a good father. We're just flowing. Is that all right? <laughs> We're just flowing. I promise I'm not going to be long. Amen. Amen. I, I want you to help me. Amen. We normally do our greeting today, but you know we're, we're a little compromised today. Is that all right? All right. <laughs> so I want to do something a little different today, but you got to, I stepped out, so you got to let me know again who, who the visitors were, okay? Amen. Um, Goblin family. <laughs> family. <laughs> Y'all stand up. Um, let me get your name. Yeah. Cassandra Smith. Maya. Maya. Yes. Yes. Woo! Welcome. And uh, Tayman. Tayman. Maya. Tayman. It was it is Tayman. Tayman. There he is. Back here. You waving, Tayman? <laughs> Our pastor wants to see you. <laughs> so let's do this. I want everybody to stand. Everybody to stand. Amen. And let's just welcome our guests to visit. Let's start over here. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. Welcome let's in the go name over of here. Jesus. Amen. Welcome, welcome in the name of Jesus. Back there, Brother Tamar. God bless you. Amen. Give them the Wakanda. Give them the Wakanda. All right. We love you. We're so excited. Do me a favor. Just give about five people to Wakanda. Just let them know. Right? God is doing something wonderful. Amen. <laughs> so marvelous, so excited. Amen. We thank and praise God for this family. Amen. God is bringing families in. Come on, y'all. These beautiful young ladies. Come on, come on. Give God a hand of praise. God bless you. Amen, Brother Tamar. Go ahead. Strong black man. All right. <laughs> and my dear sister, God bless you. It's so good to have you with us today. Let's celebrate God for everybody, everybody, everybody. Come on, clap your hands, all you people.
sit down real quickly. Sit down real quickly. We're going to get to the word of God. And I promise we're going to have you out of here. Amen. I'm getting back to basics. Come on. Thank you, choir. Amen. This music ministry minister today, give God a hand praise for them. Amen. Amen. I think I praise God, Sister Remy and the musicians walking us through the scripture, the word. You see her stepping out. Amen. <laughs> you better move your leg. <laughs> Amen. We're so honored. Amen. Amen. We're so honored to have Auntie Trish in the house. Amen. Evangelist Patricia Daniel. Amen. Come on, stand. Amen. And say praise the Lord to us. Amen. <laughs> give God a hand praise. Amen. First Lady Evangelist Patricia Daniel. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand praise. We welcome you. Amen. We're so glad to have you with us today. We thank and praise God for his traveling grace and mercy, for bringing us over the dangerous highways and byways, amen, taking us to our council services and bringing us back safely. What a wonderful time we had at our council in Bakersfield, amen? Amen, amen. I thank and praise God, amen, for the time of relief and of release and refreshing and revival we shown have had in Bakersfield, amen? Amen. I thank and praise God for the word of God that came forth that was um, relevant and timely and encouraging the testimonies of faith. Amen. I thank and praise God that he took all manner of anxiety. I was getting all kind of reports. Amen. Watching the news and trying to check in and what's going on and getting school alerts from the kids. They're going to be out of school for three weeks and, you know, it's already like Armin getting out <laughs> where we are and can't find nothing. And in the midst of it, God gave me a peace. He gave me a peace in worship. Amen. He gave me a peace in worship. He gave me a peace in worship. And so I think and praise God, amen, for the time that we got a chance, amen, to get away. Amen. And we thank and praise God, amen, for our bishop, amen, and for our chairman and for those who lead our organization, amen, that we're affiliated with for the divine deposit that we got this past weekend, amen. And we're excited about going forward, amen, with new charges, amen. And I just thank and praise God for, amen, what he's doing here at Bethesda, amen. We still have people praying for us. We still have people excited about what God is doing, amen. I thank and praise God for the time I get to go to the council, amen, to just hear from other leaders and other mentors. I'm still a young man, so I still go to be accountable. Amen. I take off work because I need to be accountable. Amen. And to have different leaders put their arms around me and say, hey, you know, we're proud of what you're doing. We're behind you. We support you. Amen. And even those who need to just, you know, kick you and say, hey, you know what? <laughs> Rethink this or amen. I think and praise God because even when God loves, he chastises his way chasing us because he loves us. Amen. 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 So I think and praise God for, amen, all that we experienced, all that, amen, the outpouring of God's uh, great love, his graciousness, his traveling grace and mercy for bringing us back, amen, for an appointed time to worship God, amen, amen. You've heard the announcements. There are some volunteers that we need help with, amen. We don't want to um, overwhelm, amen, those who help us with facilities here. We want to make sure we're doing our part to make sure that our community of worship here, our temple of worship is in pristine condition, amen. So for those of you all that don't mind volunteering, don't mind coming coming down, please get with us, amen, so that we can uh, get you, amen, on a schedule to help us make sure that we keep things uh, 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 on, on the up and up, amen. We've informed you that, amen, we're going to be having Bible class this week virtually, amen. We're going to be monitoring and working with the CDC and working with uh, healthcare professionals as well as, amen, those in the government to give you direction as to what we do with our services, amen, amen. And so we thank and praise God, amen, that we're at a place where we can be comfortable, there's enough room, amen, for us to stretch out amen but if we need to curtail and we need to tweak things we certainly will do that and you will definitely get information from us and from our board amen as we go forward amen if there is a need for food we have food amen we have a food bank program amen Amen. If there's a need for food and if you need, don't leave this service today. Amen. If you need something, amen. We have the food bank. Sister Christie's here. Amen. And the team is here. We can support you and make sure you don't have to go get in the line and try to, you know, beat nobody down for the last pot roast. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 This is what we have the food bank program for is to serve the community, but it's also to serve those who are, have need. Amen. And so we thank and praise God for the flexibility of working with us. And so if there is a need, amen, please, amen, come by and see, um, amen, Sister Christy and see those that work in the food bank so that we can make sure that you have what you need. Amen. 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 
So again, those are a lot of the announcements. Other things are coming forth. I pray that you would join us. Amen. As we continue, amen, our study in the word of God. Amen. As it deals with living the consecrated life. Amen. Let's go to word of the Lord. Amen. I've got about 15 minutes and I plan to be brief, be anointed and be seated. Amen. Amen. Go with me to the book of Exodus chapter number 12. Let's continue to keep First Lady in prayer. Amen. We, you know, there's certain things that we have to look at. She's, there's some things that are coming up for her that we need to be praying about. Amen. I want the church, amen, to pray with me. Amen. So there's some things that we have to do, amen, just to make sure that she can have her future successful things coming up. And so there, she's one of those high risk ones we got to worry about, you know, when it comes to certain things that she's dealing with. Amen. As well as the baby. Amen. You know, so let's continue to keep them in prayer. Let's keep Lady May in prayer. Amen. First Lady May. Come on. Give God a hand praise for Mother May. Amen. Amen. She's doing well. I talked to Deacon Byron. Amen. She's doing well. Amen. You know, just sometimes it's not, you know, amen. When you get older, it's it's a challenge sometimes getting to the house of God. Amen. But she can, I believe that she can hear the word of prayer. Amen. From the people of God. Amen. So let's keep praying. Let's keep lifting up. Amen. The matriarch of this ministry. Amen. Exodus chapter number 12, verses number 12 and 13. Exodus chapter number 12, verses 12 and 13. Please stand when you have it. Just two scriptures today. Amen. Exodus 12, verses 12 and 13. When you found it, would you say amen? Amen. Amen. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment I am the Lord and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Father, we thank you for your word, your divine protection, O God. We pray, O God, that you would meet us, O God, in revelation, in scripture and in faith, O God. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God said, Amen. For just a few moments, I want to minister from this subject, divine protection. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, divine protection. Uh, This first quarter, we're coming to a close. This first quarter, I wanted to deal strategically the first quarter of this millennium, or not millennium, of this decade, uh, uh, dealing with words to live by affirmations, words, amen, of scripture, amen, admonishments of the Lord as motifs and of amen, am I, am I okay, yeah, you good, okay, all right, <laughs> amen, of, uh, of motifs or, or words of encouragement to stir us as building blocks for the great things that God wants to do and desires to do in our life starting this decade. And so we've been navigating the scriptures and amen, the Lord I think met us here last week with settled words from heaven. Amen. Words to live by. Amen. Or words. Amen. That will propel us. Amen. To become what God desires for us to become as we shift. Amen. Into his divine. Amen. Plan and assignment for our lives. Amen. I think as we look at all that's in, that we're embarking upon as a country. Amen. As we look at what's going on around the world. Amen. We can't help but think of this uh, natural uh, catastrophe or phenomenon or whatever epidemic, whatever word they're using uh, to define it. I believe that in many cases, as I was watching the news this past week, that more than the physical threat, uh, I think the greatest exposure that the people uh, of the world have right now is a psychological threat. More than the physical threat, the ailments. I mean, when they've likened the coronavirus to, amen, the fever or to something that we've dealt with, just a kind of different strand of it. And they're still trying to study this thing. And I think at the center and at the forefront of of most individuals' mind, more than the symptoms and more than the physical attributes of this threat is the psychological Uh, The psychological things that are associated with it. I'm breaking all kind of rules. They tell me even right now I shouldn't be touching my face. All right. (laughs) But I was I was watching one of the news outlets and they were talking about it. And thank you so much, sir. And they were sharing with me that 
There are some four things to consider that I want you to hope you have a pen and paper that you're writing these things down. There are four things they want you to consider as ways that you can counteract this thing that we're embarking upon. Uh, uh, there are some things that we can do that we're probably not conscious of that can help us uh, repel against uh, uh, this coronavirus. And they seem very simple when I thought about it, but they also, I think, have some pretty biblical uh, um, based uh, uh, foundational uh, uh, precepts or uh, uh, foundational ideas that come from the word of God that can help us. And, and this what a resident expert was sitting on the panel and he says, one of the things that you can do, there are four things. He said, the first thing you can do is sleep that you can sleep. If you sleep, it allows your body to recharge. It allows your body in sleeping, amen, to get the natural uh, things necessary for it to recharge itself so that the, if the immune system, amen, can be recharged. I thought to myself, wow, <laughs> isn't it interesting that in the midst of everything that we're dealing with, the people of God, amen, should have an ability to sleep in, in trials and adversity. Didn't we see Jesus sleep in the midst of a storm? <laughs> the disciples rocking back and forth. What do we do? Somebody wake him up. I don't know. <laughs> he got that deep sleep. He got that good snore. What do we do? What do we do? Somebody wake him up. I think he might have sleep apnea. <laughs> Somebody wake Jesus up. <laughs> he sleep in the midst of the storm. I thought, what a concept for the believer that in the midst of all that's going on, that God would allow you to be recharged. So the next thing that you can do in addition to sleep is get rest. There is a difference. There's a difference. You know, the sleep is what is needed to recharge the body. But rest is what's needed in a situation where people are restless. Amen. There's a lot of individuals right now who are restless with all that's going on. He says you can rest. You can rest psychologically by not worrying. <laughs> Yeah, you can rest. Amen. You can rest. You can take confidence. Amen. That everything is going to be all right. Amen. If there's one thing that the believer must do in this season is rest. Rest in the confidence that we have in God's word. Rest, amen, in his divine ability to keep you from falling. Rest, amen, in the understanding that God is able to do all but lie, but fail, but change, amen, that God's hand is on his people and that he will bring us to an expected end. Somebody say amen. Now, the next thing contradicts what he just said because he says you have to sleep, you have to rest, but then he said you also need to move. <laughs> you need movement. You need physical activity. You need to be able to stretch yourself in the season. What happens sometimes in catastrophes and what happens sometimes, amen, when things start going crazy in our life is we shut down. We stop moving. Mm -hmm. ah. I need you to catch that spiritually. Life can sometimes come to your doorstep and debilitate you. Stop you from making progress. Stop you from moving, amen, to your places in life. There are a lot of plans. There are a lot of ambitions. There are a lot of prizes on the line. I think specifically about all that happened in the in, uh, NBA and all the different professional leagues that stopped people that were going for a prize. And it all got halted because of this outbreak. And so with everything that's going on, many of us, we have assignments, we have charges, we have personal things that we're pursuing. But just in the midst of catastrophe and all that's going on, it doesn't mean that you have to be stationary. <laughs> You have to use wisdom, right? <laughs> ah, which means you can't congregate. What if God was telling you that in this season you could do with a few less people? <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. When anthrax came around, everybody that sneezed had anthrax, and uh, when people were looking sleepy, we droopy. So you got that swine flu, right? Maybe this is a season where we purge people, amen, who are hindering us from getting moving in life. You need movement. <laughs> Uh, the last thing that he shared that I thought was most important is the very thing that many of us uh, are trying to put preventative measures in place to avoid, and that's connection. In this season, more than anything, you need connection. 
You need to be able to connect with individuals. That connection doesn't mean you have to be standing next to somebody. It's connecting with people that want to help you get moving in life. Yeah. Connecting with people that have a purpose, amen, to see you in the midst of all catastrophe still get to your place in God. You can use this season if you want to to stop you. <laughs> you could use this season, amen, as an excuse for why favor <laughs> ah, yes, is eroded and why you can't get where you want to get but God is saying in this season, maybe it's time for you to connect with some people. Yoke up with some people that want to see you move to your place in God. I declare and decree even as I stand here today that there are going to be some people calling you this week <laughs> ah, for you to uh, interview for new positions. There uh, I feel the wind of God in here. <laughs> uh, even this week, amen, no coronavirus can stop God's agenda for your life, can stop God's favor on your life. I wish I had a witness out there. I give the testimony myself. I got three calls this past week about jobs in Los Angeles. I in the midst of corona. You said you want me to be closer to the people of God. You better step on through that door like Remy was stepping through. Somebody help me give God a praise in this house right now. It cannot stop God's plan. It cannot stop God's movement. It cannot stop you from getting to your place of destination. Look at somebody and tell them I'm going somewhere. Mm. Owen somewhere. <laughs> so in the midst of fear, hysteria, and the arm and get an approach to life, it provokes me as a believer to realize that there's a sad reality that's going on in life. That at this moment of great volatility in our country, there are people who cherish toilet paper more than they cherish Jesus. There are people who need bread more than they need a relationship with God. And there are people who will stand in the aisle and fight over a gallon of homogenized milk, amen, then realize, amen, that he is the source of life. He is the bread of life, which means that if you have him, you should appreciate him now more than ever. There's one thing that we all need in this system in, 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 in this season is a dose of reality that amen that when the world is going berserk amen that we are divinely protected of God. Psalms 32 and 7 would tell us thou art my hiding place uh, um, thou shalt preserve me from trouble thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance <laughs> uh, Psalms 46 and 1 would tell us that God is our refuge and our strength and a very present help in the time of trouble you must realize amen that God is in covenant with you to protect you. Ah, the scriptures would tell us that you should not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, or nor the destruction that lays waste at the noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, and, but it shall not come near you. Only ah, with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Ah, Yes, uh, Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 would tell us that the Lord himself is a divine protector by telling us himself, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, uh, so that we may boldly say the Lord is our helper. Uh, will not fear what can man do to me. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Ah, uh, uh, yes. The scriptures they tell us in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4 uh, uh, that he would keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him uh, um, because he trusts in you. He says, trust in the Lord forever for in Yah, this is the new King James Version, the Lord is everlasting strength. Uh, uh, David would tell us in his walking with God that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because I'm divinely protected. Ah, uh, uh, you are with me, your rod and your staff 
comfort me. What a revelation that his rod I would be comfort to him. I could see the staff part, but the rod being comfort to him as he walks through the perils of life. Ah, yes. The scriptures would tell us in Hebrews 4 and 16, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace. What? In help in the time of need. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous will run to it and be saved. Proverbs 18 and 10. Uh, Second uh, Thessalonians uh, 3 and 3 would tell us that the Lord is faithful that he will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Uh, Hebrews 1 and 4 in the Amplified would tell us are not all the angels ministering spirits sent out uh, by God to serve and to accompany and to protect those uh, who will inherit salvation. Of course they are. Ah, uh, uh, Yes, Hebrews or Luke chapter number 4 and 10 would tell us. Uh, for it is written that he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep you. Ah, uh, uh, yes. And I appreciate most, amen, importantly, uh, in Psalms 91, 10 and 11, that no evil will be fall you ha, nor any plague come near your tent for he will command his angels ha, in regard to you to protect and guard you in all your ways ha, ha, that's Psalms 91 10 and 11 ha, Psalms 34 and 7 would tell us that the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him ha, and delivers them ha, you've got too much word ha, for you to be uh, despondent. You have too much word uh, for you to be fearful. Uh, you've got too many statutes and principles and precepts uh, for you to fall to the narrative of the day uh, that you have no hope. Uh, look at somebody and tell them how uh, uh, you have divine protection. Uh, his word uh, uh, says that he would keep you uh, from falling. His his word says uh, that he would cover his people. Uh, his word says uh, that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Uh, if you believe it, clap your hands uh, like you know you have divine protection. Uh, my last point as I get out of here uh, is divine protection requires the believer to do something. Uh, um, the scriptures would tell us that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, uh, but this is a scripture of action to execute or to allow God to execute divine protection in your life. Uh, in order for you to reap the benefits of Psalms 121. Ha, um, that the Lord would not uh, suffer thy foot to be moved ha, that the Lord would be your keeper ha, that the Lord shall preserve thee from evil ha, that he should preserve thy soul ha, that he should preserve thy going out and thy coming in ha, in order for this scripture to be activated you've got a job to do ha, what is your job ha, to lift up your eyes unto the hills ha, from whence come with your help. You cannot activate God's divine protection looking to and from. Ah, yes, you cannot activate God's divine protection looking down at the ground. You cannot activate God's divine protection being fearful and looking around the day. Look at somebody and tell them, you got to lift your eyes unto the hill uh, to activate this glory uh, to activate this divine protection uh, you've got to look up to the hills uh, in the midst of what's going on uh, to allow God's glory uh, to take preeminence in every situation uh, somebody clap your hands and give God praise for divine protection there is no greater example than the text. Ah, uh, yes, for the children of Israel have been assigned to for divine protection. They were shielded in a place called 
Goshen. Ah, yes, that word Goshen. In the midst of them coming out of Egypt. Let me take you to Bible class. For those of you that miss this part of our Bible class. Ah, yes. The scriptures tell us that in the midst of God delivering a people out of Egypt. That he strategically hid his people in a place called Goshen. Ah, yes. That, amen, when the blood, amen. When the water turned to blood in all of Egypt. And the frogs got loose. And the lice and the gnats went forth. And the flies came a buzzing. And the livestock fell. And the boils came. And the hell descended. And the locusts came. And the darkness gathered. That you could not see anything. The children of God. The children of Israel were divinely protected. In a place called Goshen. They had sustenance. When the world was falling apart. They had light. In darkness. Ah yes. They had provision. When everything else was falling apart. Why? Because these children of Israel were in a place called Goshen. When you break down that word Goshen that word Goshen means drawing near or to draw near. I come to tell some of you the first point for some of you is that in order for you to have divine protection you have to draw near to God. If you want to activate God's divine protection you cannot do it outside of his hedge of protection. You cannot do it outside of his wheel. You cannot be divinely protected unless you make up in your mind to draw near unto God. Somebody clap your hands and give God a praise for the nearness of God. <laughs> yes, the last plague of the ten that the children of Israel had to endure was the death of the firstborn child. And then after that last plague, the scriptures say, now I'm back up shorter. Everybody that wasn't drawing near, everybody that wasn't in Goshen was susceptible to plague. Let me prophetically stand here and tell you that every Everybody in this house that's not trying to draw near to God ha, will face the weight of this plague. Ha, if I be a man of God, I'll stand here and declare ha, that everybody that doesn't want in Goshen ha, has to live with the fallout of the plagues. Ha, I don't know about you, but look at somebody ha, and tell them in this season, ha, I want to get as close to God as I can. Ha, in this season, I want to get as near his presence as I can. In this season when everything is going crazy and bonkers, I, I want to read my word with a fervor like never before. I want to pray without ceasing like never before. I want to worship in spirit and in truth. Where are my Goshen saints? Where are my saints that say, I just want to be near. Draw me nearer, near, blessed Lord, to the place where thou has died. Clap your hands and give God a praise for his death divine protection <laughs> it's time to break the children of Israel out uh, and then I'm getting out of here the instruction to Moses uh, yes at the beginning here of chapter number 12 is that God is going to pass through the land of Egypt that night and he's going to smite all the firstborn of the land of Egypt both man and beast against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment that's what the Lord had told Moses and Aaron he says I want you to do something though in order for the children of Israel to be divinely protected there are some things that you must do he says the first thing they have to do ha, is they have to provide me a perfect sacrifice. Ha. Every house is required ha, to get a lamb for the house. Ha. Uh, God is looking for unblemished worship people ha, uh, in this day ha, with catastrophe all around. Ha, God is saying my covenant with you will be 
renewed. If you make up in your mind to not give me any kind of worship, but to devote to giving me unblemished worship. I'm going to say it anyhow. He also says, not only are you required to get a lamb for the house and to offer it unblemishedly. He said, the third thing I want you to do, he says, if the house is too little for a lamb, he says, I want you to share it with your neighbors. Get your neighbors from off the block and you all join forces and you share the lamb. I want you to understand something. Divine protection or deliverance is not to be wasted. There is no waste in deliverance. God is saying if it's too much for you to handle, grab somebody and share it. In this day when people are buying up everything and won't share anything with anyone, God is saying in this day, it is your charge. It is your job. It is your burden. It is your responsibility to share the love of Jesus with everybody. How dare you be a selfish saint in a time when the world needs Jesus the most. How dare you sit up in here and not speak to people and not love people and not forgive. I feel like having church all by myself. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you cannot be selfish and expect divine protection. Some of you so selfish, you didn't even look at your neighbor, you looked at me. So I'm going to give you another chance. Look at your neighbor in a cock eye and tell them God said, you cannot have divine protection and be selfish. You got to share this love. You got to share this glory. You got to share that anointing. You got to share this deliverance. Somebody help me give God a praise in here. <laughs> it can't be wasted. He says in order for there to be, come on Aaron, let's get out of here. In order for there to be divine protection, he says there has to be unity. Everybody say unity. Yeah, 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 yeah. unity. He says in order for there to be divine protection, he says there must be divine agreement. He says everybody has to take this lamb on the 14th day into the congregation of Israel in the evening and sacrifice this lamb at the same time. I feel my help in here. Can I have three more minutes? He says unity. Everybody on one accord has to kill it at the same time on the same evening. He says when you drain the lamb, I want you to take the blood Take the blood and strike the post of the house in which you going to eat this lamb. He says, I want you to take the blood, put it on the post. He says that I can identify the house that wants to be saved. Do I have anybody in here that'll wave your hand and say, God, I want you to save this house. God, I want you to save my family. God, I want you to save my loved ones. I wish you wouldn't mind waving your hand. I don't care what's going on outside, but in this house, you can wave your hand and tell God, save this house, protect this house, keep this house on the up and up. Somebody help me give God a praise for divine protection say yeah say yeah he says strike the post he says that in the house that you're gonna eat it and then he says this is your instruction for how you eat this deliverance this is your destruct this is your instruction for how you consume this meal he says I want you to take the flesh in that night he says I want you to roast it with fire with unleavened bread 
and with bitter herbs shall you eat it. He says roast the lamb. Notice he says I don't want you to boil it. I don't want you to boil the lamb. I don't want you to use your own recipe. He says I want you to roast it. There are some of you in here. God is not accepting our sacrifice because our sacrifice is watered down. You've got a watered down worship. You've got a watered down prayer life. You've got a watered down fasting life. You've got a watered down attitude toward leadership. I'm in my house, y'all. Sorry on social media. I feel like having church all by myself. You got a watered down ego and a half hearted spirit. And God is saying, if you want my divine protection, you cannot water down this sacrifice. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't you give him a watered down worship. Tell him, neighbor, put some fire behind that hand clap. Put some fire behind that holler. Put some fire behind the raising of your hands. Somebody help me give God a pure praise right now. No, 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 no. No. Everybody in this house, give God a real fiery praise right now. Don't you water down that hand clap. Don't you water down that worship. Don't you water down that holler. Open up your mouth and give him what he wants. Somebody help me praise him from the depths of your spirit. Somebody holler till it hurts. Somebody bless him and give him what he wants. Yeah. Say that. He says, don't bake it. He says, don't water it down. He says, the same night, I don't want you. He says, to eat leavened bread. Somebody, he says, don't eat leavened bread. He says, I want you to eat the meal with unleavened bread. Then he also says, I want you to prepare this meal. He says, with the bitter herbs. There are some of you that want divine protection, but you only want to eat the sweet things in life. Some of you want God's divine protection, but you never want to see stormy days. There are some of you that want to see the fullness of God, but you don't want to eat your vegetables. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're not touching today, but say neighbor. Let's touch and agree in the spirit to eat our vegetables. Somebody say, yeah, let's eat our vegetables. Let's eat the good with the bad. Let's take it all as God puts it on our plate that we would have divine protection as they get the meal in place. He says, I want you to eat it with urgency. Some of you are delaying deliverance. You're delaying your decision making. You're delaying your call. You're delaying your decision making. And God said, in this season, you have a charge. You have a mandate. You have a burden. You have a responsibility. God said, do it with urgency. Don't waste time. If you want to get out, you've got to eat it and you've got to eat it quickly. God says whatever you don't eat, I want you to burn it. But everything has a purpose. He says after you've eaten the meal, go through the house and scrub out the leaven. God said for some of you, in order to have divine protection. You've got to sweep through the house and you've got to get the unleavened things. you got to get the leavened things out of your house. Leaven represents sin. Some of you want divine protection but you don't want to deal with the sin in your life. I'm preaching holiness but it's right anyhow. God said in this season, if you want my divine protection, he says you got to get sin out of your life. Look at 
at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you want God to cover you, you've got to get the sin out of your life. you got to get the sin and the backbiting and the devil nature under in the flesh, under control, and sweep it out the house. Say, neighbor, we're getting ready to land this ship. But say, neighbor, my last word for you is once you've gotten the sin out of your house, whatever you do, stay in the house. I feel like having church all by myself. Those that had to leave had to leave. But I feel like having church all by myself. Look at your neighbor. Give him a strong look. And say, neighbor, the word for you is stay in the house. Now that the blood's been applied to your life, stay in the house. I don't care what's going on out there. Stay under the blood. Stay under grace and mercy. Stay under forgiveness. Stay under atonement. Stay under the grace of God. Somebody clap your hands and give him a praise. Say yeah. Say yeah. I got to close. But in my closing, he says when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. God is saying in this last day, I'm going to divinely protect my people. But I'm looking for the blood. It's the blood still on your life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't get distracted. Stay under the blood. Are you ashamed of the blood stain? Are you ashamed to be saved? Are you ashamed to be called out? Are you ashamed of the wonder working power of the blood? Say yeah. I'm going to my seat. I'll preach the rest of it another time. But look at your neighbor and say neighbor. We're going to help the preacher land this plane. Say neighbor. Whatever you do, stay under. Stay under. Stay under. Make up your mind. For God I live. For God I die. Make a decision to stay under the grace of God. Stay under the blood of God. Look at that neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't going nowhere. Storms may come. Trials may come. People may leave the church. People may walk away. But I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stay under the blood. I'm going to stay lifting my hands. I'm going to stay lifting my voice. I'm going to stay giving him glory. I'm going to stay giving him honor. I'm going to stay on the ship. I'm going to stay under his edge. The protection. If I die, let me die in safety. Let me die in the peace of God. Somebody praise his wonderful name. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, in times like these, stay in the house. Stay under the blood. I don't know why ain't nobody in here helping me praise God. If you're under the blood, I need you to jump up on your feet and praise him for divine protection. No bird flu. No swine flu. No Zika. It doesn't matter. I'm divinely protected. 
Looked at the clock and realized we had had night service. So I gave myself 15 points. Lift your hand and thank God for the blood. Come on, lift your hand and thank God for the blood. 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 Thank God you're in the house. Not that you got cars, not that you got money, but lift your head and praise him that you're saved and divinely protected. Oh, say yeah. This is the altar call. Anybody in the house that want to stay in the house, get to this altar and just lift your hands. Come on. We can't do it like we normally do, but just get to this altar and raise your hands. you come on just come around this altar you have to worry about nobody those of you that want divine protection you're in the house want to stay in the house want to renew your covenant whatever it may be back hurt sniffy flu whatever comes to this altar right now 